Hello everyone, my name is Elvis and welcome to Grey Money Matters. In this episode on Working Capital, we are going to start with the cash conversion cycle portion of the series, beginning with inventory days. In this video, I'll explain the variables within the formula that will be used to calculate inventory days, where the information comes from and why this information is used. I will also go through some examples so you can get a better understanding of the cash conversion cycle concept. With that being said, let's get started. Let's start with the inventory days formula. You will notice in the numerator, which is above the line in this equation, is looking at average inventory. The information is obtained from the balance sheet, which is a snapshot of your financial position at a point in time. You will draw your attention to the inventory line item highlighted here. This represents the key item we are going to be analyzing in this instance, inventory. For this example, we will only see a snapshot for one period which represents the closing balance. Usually, you would see multiple periods based on the time frame you are analyzing. So, if you are analyzing a full financial year, you would see the prior year inventory balance as well as the current year balance for a 365 day period or a previous month's balance along with the current month inventory value, which represents a 30 day period. The average inventory represents the opening inventory plus closing inventory divided by two to obtain an average for a particular period. In our example, we'll only refer to a single period value as the business in this example maintains a strategy to hold and replenish at a particular level. This level of inventory will be 500,000. Basically, our opening inventory equals the closing inventory, so the average would be the same. Why the period matters in this formula is that you need to understand your analysis reference point. The reference points could be a full financial year, a six month period, a quarterly period, or a period of one month. The reason for this is you need to maintain consistency with the other variable in the denominator, which is located below the line in the equation, and your multiple as in this example. Since we are analyzing a full financial year, the multiple is 365. You will also need to consider the period based on your industry, seasonality, and the strategy of your business, as mentioned earlier. Now, if you look below the line in the denominator, you will notice the variable cost of goods sold. This information comes from the profit and loss statement, and it represents the performance of your business. You can see this highlighted below. If you sell a particular product throughout the year, the inventory line item located in the balance sheet reduces and then inventory is reported under cost of goods sold once a sale has been recorded. As you can see, the connection between inventory and cost of goods sold. Let's continue with some examples to help us deepen our understanding. In this example, we have obtained a value of $500,000 worth of inventory currently sitting in our warehouses. This is the strategy chosen in this example to maintain this level of inventory throughout the year. As the year progresses, we sold $10 million worth of inventory shown below in the denominator. Then the value obtained is multiplied by 365 to give us the efficiency figure in terms of days. Here we see 19 days. This is pretty good as the value indicates that every 19 days we sell our entire stock of inventory valued at $500,000 and replenish it back up again to the value of $500,000 every 19 days. Now, let's take a look at an unfavorable situation. Let's say we want to increase our working capital, assuming demand for the year is going to double from our prior example. We therefore increase our inventory level to $1 million throughout the year instead of $500,000 but this time some unfavorable economic event happened and drastically reduced our ability to sell our inventory throughout the year. This time we only managed to sell $1 million worth of inventory. As you can see, we have a ratio of one based on the $1 million worth of average inventory maintained in the numerator compared to the $1 million worth of cost of goods sold in our denominator. Then we multiply the ratio by 365 to convert it to days. We get a pretty bad situation with 365 days, which basically indicates that we sold our entire value of stock just once throughout the year, and it took us a whole year to do so. Hopefully this example kind of brought it home for you, 
and it made it easier for you to understand. As an addition, a simple tip for you to look at in your own time. If you look at the formula, you will notice that if you flip the equation around and exclude the multiplier, you will obtain the inventory turnover formula, which indicates how many times you have sold your full level of inventory and replenished it. Had you sold the total amount of inventory, you will obtain a multiplier as a figure for the inventory turnover value. In this first example, this value is 20. This is how many times you turned over inventory when you only look at the cost of goods sold compared to the average inventory level. Then, if you grab this value and divided the 365 days by 20, you'll attain, you guessed it, 19 days. And that's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around to the end and make sure you continue your education in working capital by viewing the next video in this series on accounts receivable days or accounts payable days. Thank you and until next time.